Wasteland Inhabitants, how are you living? I'm Wild Bill, got Rufus right there with me in the shop, and I got you in the shop with me here as well, and man, is that a cool thing, because when you stop by the shop, I get to show you some cool stuff. What kind of cool stuff are we going to show you today? Well, I'm going to show you how I make stuff that creates that kind of rust texture right there, and that kind of rust texture right there some cool cool stuff and you know this is also one of our budget build kind of topics so uh, you're gonna be saving some money you can go out and you can buy the expensive um, rust textured paints and they are pretty darn good I'm not gonna deny that but nothing creates a rust texture better than a rust itself. So, you know what, man? Let's get to it. I'm going to show you how I make DIY rust, my own rust texture, for creating my rust on cars. You know what? Check that out, man. That's a plastic body. And, you know... Who knew plastic could rust like that, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get to it, man. What, what do we need to do to create our rust texture? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to get a paint pot. You can uh, go to a craft store and pick one up like I did here. Uh, they're not expensive at all, and they come in pretty handy. If you have uh, used paint pots that, uh, you know, as you go through your hobby, um, you might use up all your paint save that paint pot man rinse it out give it a good little wash and uh save it so that you have it for stuff like we're doing today so paint pot you're also going to need some steel wool right here we have a a four rot steel wool right any kind of steel wool really will work here you just need to make sure that it does not have any soap in it we're not washing dishes we are Gaslands building, so get the steel wool that's just plain steel wool and not stuff that has soap in it, right? So we've got our, our steel wool and the third thing we need, distilled white vinegar. Now you can use any vinegar that you want. Uh, I prefer distilled white vinegar because it's clear and it allows me to have no other stuff be it little particles of uh grape or or apple or whatever um i i get a nice clear um clear liquid to build off of so um the, again you can use the other stuff if you want to uh, but you know uh, i don't want to introduce any off colors so we're just going to let the rust do its work paint pot steel wool you take off a, uh, a piece of steel wool, you break it off from your uh, your big bulky bit. And you know, I sort of pull it apart a little bit here and uh, give it some some air. You're going to let this let this steel wool breathe. It, you know, I mean, uh, part of the whole creation of the rust technique is, you know, it takes air uh, to get rust going. So, we put our steel wool into our jar. We don't pack it down, right? Keep it, keep it airy, you know, in there. Let that, let that steel wool breathe, like I said, all right? From there, we're going to take our distilled white vinegar. Open it up. And we're going to give it a little splash into our jar I'm gonna cover it up real quick and give it a little shaky shaky right we're just making sure that we got a good coating of that vinegar all over the fibers of that steel wool all right. from there we take the lid off and we're gonna take this and I'm gonna put it outside 
The reason why is uh, you got the vinegar and you got the steel wool reacting. It's going to kick off some, some fumes that aren't too pleasant to smell. I don't want that smell in my workshop. So outside this goes for um, about two, three, maybe four days. Don't put it out in, in your yard or garden or whatever where uh, rain is going to get into it or anything like that, you know. You want to keep it... Uh, Keep it protected from the elements, uh, but also open to the air so that the rust can do its magic. The vinegar has an acid to it, and that acid is going to uh, basically eat the coatings that they put on the, um, at, on the steel wool to prevent it from rusting while it's in the package. Uh, with that, once it's exposed, N Mother Nature does her work, and you get... A nice rust after a couple days now again I'm just gonna put this to the side because I want to bring on camera some of these this is what we've got right I've got a a light tone rust I've got a medium tone rust and I've got a dark grimy tone in the rust this is going to take some experimentation on your part all right I've showed you the basics of how this base, you know, all works. So um, from there, you're going to get, you know, one of these uh, with what you've done. I like to have three tones, and the way that I create these three different tones is you've got to experiment with the levels of steel wool that you have and the amount of vinegar that you have. And in addition, how densely or loosely you pack the steel wool into the jar. I find that if I use uh, more vinegar and pack the steel wool more densely, I get this dark, grimy texture, which almost looks like uh, grease and rust mixed together. And it's dark and nasty and oh so good to put on a model especially like around the engine parts and uh, around the undercarriage and I've got a medium texture or you know medium tone rather and you can see the difference already I mean that's quite a bit brighter than the other but you're getting into looking more rust then grime. You can see what it looks like when it sort of dries. That's the effects that you're going to get. Now, the lighter tone here is uh, a very aired out bit of steel wool with uh, with a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of the vinegar and you get that lighter quality uh to your to your rust so you know three different uh effects again you're gonna have to experiment you'll find your way i wish i could tell you that you, you take this amount and then this amount and it, but it just doesn't work that way guys uh this is one that experience is is gonna be your best teacher i can just merely show you uh, how to do it and then let you run wild with it but there you go man um, we're gonna show you how to use these in the future oh oh one, one other thing uh, this stuff here right the distilled white vinegar again has an acid to it it's important that you use this and not water right water does create rust I get that uh, but the the vinegar ha with that acid um, is going to kill off any like bacteria that would grow maybe in your your water and rust solution so it's another reason why to use the vinegar uh, and not not just water to create this stuff in addition um, to make sure that you have a liquidy paint like quality to this just go ahead and add more of this as required and, over the course of time, the uh, you're going to get a sludge to this as the vinegar 
uh, evaporates and uh, you know goes away or you even use it as long as you got the sludge at the bottom just add a little bit of vinegar to it stir it up and uh, let the let the rust work with the vinegar to get you more of this eventually you know you you run out like I did uh, and then you just make some more you know I mean it's not expensive to make it's a great DIY project and we are going to cover how to create stuff like this with this in the future so be watching for that and thanks for stopping by man it was great having you and I love sharing tips like this with you uh, makes us all better builders and you know that's what community is all about so I uh, want to say this man before I let you go when you're in the wasteland playing gaslands remember maximum carnage is always your best option with that Rufus and I are out of here. You have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your day.